Fox Extreme Weather Alert, Hawaii bracing for its first direct hurricane in more than 20 years. Two storms, in fact, you can see them clearly there, making their way toward the islands. The first hurricane, Isel, expected to arrive by tonight. Oklahoma has exceeded California in the number of earthquakes. Fracking is getting more attention from citizens and scientists. Dr. Ricky Ott is talking to Oklahomans about hydraulic fracturing. The marine biologist says she's made a connection between the chemicals used as dispersants in saltwater oil spills and those used as dilutants in the fracking process. And she doesn't like what she says are the health risks. So who does that leave at risk? Us, ordinary people minding their own business and thinking they're going to be okay, and they're not. The Oklahoma Independent Petroleum Association says a lack of understanding about the drilling process and the industry as a whole leads to confusion and, in many cases, fear. These attitudes have been amplified by anti-fossil fuel groups who use them to promote their agenda against the use of oil and natural gas. You can sit in Oklahoma City and say, we need the oil, but if you were sitting in South Western Penn County or the east side of Stillwater where they're clustered all around you, uh, you would have a different story because your way of life has totally changed.
A man in Eagle County has died from a disease that kills nearly half the people who get infected. CBS 4's Mountain Newsroom reporter Jeff Todd has more for, from Eagle about that warning going out about hantavirus. We've not had a case since 2005, so it is a little rare for us to see that in Eagle County. But just two weeks ago, a man who recently moved to Eagle County was infected and died at a local hospital. Now county officials are urging people to be aware. crisis, Ebola, it is spreading. Hundreds and hundreds are dying and dying a miserable death, even bleeding from their eyes. It's so ugly. And there's very grim news tonight. Ebola striking two American aid workers in West Africa, one of them a doctor for Samaritan's Purse. And the question many asking tonight, can Ebola be stopped from reaching the U.S.? A case of Ebola is only a plane ride away from coming to this country. It's one of the deadliest diseases on this planet. The Centers for Disease Control is closely monitoring what's become the largest Ebola outbreak in history. The largest ever. There's no cure for it. The symptoms can be frustratingly vague. Fever and headaches, diarrhea and vomiting, weakness and stomach pain. But at the end, kidney failure and then hemorrhage and death. Two Americans are fighting for their lives. The spread of a dangerous illness like Ebola is is no longer someone else's problem. And the Wall Street Journal's Jason Bellini joins us. Jason, um, is there a risk that this deadly virus is going to come here? Hi, Credo. Is there a risk? Well, there is a risk because now we've seen at least one person travel out of this infected area in West Africa who flew to Nigeria. And one of the real difficulties here is that, you know, you can be without symptoms for many weeks carrying this virus travel abroad and then become symptomatic and then present a danger and also we had the awful news that Sierra Leone's top doctor we just learned died of this disease this comes after Liberia's top doctor died of this disease as well Great continues to spread plans are underway to bring two American aid workers infected with Ebola back to the United States for treatment this as health officials around the world sound the alarm over how quickly this virus is spreading CBS 2 Sonia Racon has the latest there has never been a known case of Ebola in the United States. That's about to change. Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Reipel will be flown to Atlanta in a special jet retrofitted with an isolation chamber. The plane can only carry one patient at a time. One will arrive in the next few days, the other a few days later. They'll be treated at Emory Hospital in Atlanta, which has an isolation unit. And doctors there say they're ready. We feel that we have the environment and expertise to safely care for these patients and offer them the maximum opportunity for recovery from these infections. They also say they have every precaution in place to protect staff and visitors the same way they would against hepatitis or HIV. The latest Ebola outbreak has killed more than 700 people in West Africa. Liberia has been especially affected. The government does not have the capacity anymore to deal with this outbreak, so we need the help of the international community. The head of the World Health Organization says the illness is spreading faster than the efforts to control it. The CDC issuing a level one activation, its highest alert in response to the deadly Ebola outbreak. Jonathan Seri, live from our Atlanta newsroom, has the very latest. Uh, hi, Jonathan. What does this level one activation mean exactly? Hi, Patty. Um, well, the last time the CDC issued a level one activation was back in 2009. Of course, back then, it was when they were dealing with the H1N1 flu pandemic. Uh, now, a CDC spokesman explains that uh, this uh, level one activation is essentially an all hands on deck call to mobilize resources across the agency, in this case, to respond to the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. Focusing on the public health approach right now because we know how to do that uh, but I will continue to uh, seek information about uh, what we're learning uh, with respect to these drugs going forward. 
Two American missionaries infected with Ebola were given doses of an experimental drug, but that was before they left Africa for treatment in the U.S. Medical experts say it's too early to know whether the treatment played a role in what we're hearing are apparent improvements in their conditions because some Ebola p patients, after all, Patty Ann, uh, a, f a small minority of them get well on their own. Yeah, around 10%, I understand. All right, Jonathan Seri, thank you so much, live sure. in Atlanta. I mean, we could easily have sent a, a properly equipped uh, airplane. We have medical ships. We have various things that we could use to treat individuals okay. and then bring them back home when they're no longer even possibly contagious.